Hello students, my name is Shayan Mitra, uh, faculty member of Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering of Kedra Kolkata College of Engineering and Management, JS. Today I was taking the class of MMA System Design. In the earlier, uh, the previous lectures, in, the, in my previous lectures, uh, I have described or the what is the significance, the importance of OS, how what is the characteristics of OS. Uh, I have described. Uh, different kind of tasks, how the task synchronization works, what is the mutual exclusion and what is the deadlocks are. So this is also the continuation of the previous lecture. In this lecture I am going to describe how the deadlock situation has been dealt, uh, has been dealt with and after that I am going to uh, explain many other different things. So let's get started with the lecture. Uh, this is the entire system and code name is ec 703 p Picture number seven. Semaphores. Uh, a semaphore is a counter that can be used to synchronize multiple tasks. As with a mutex, operating system guarantees that checking or modifying the value of a semaphore can be done safely without creating a race condition. Each semaphore has a counter value which is a non-negative integer. So basically semaphore is a counter that can be used to synchronize the multiple tasks. So in the previous lecture that we have described here that suppose there is a mutex and at the very same time both the tasks are trying to grab that specific mutex. So both the, the mutex uh, has the capability of send after uh, grabbed by uh, one task the mutex has uh, mutex has the capability of sending a signal uh, of block uh, of sending a signal to the another task which doesn't grab that mutex to block its state or uh, stay in an idle position. But in case of deadlock, uh, what happens that both the uh, task which uh, is trying to grab the mutex at a very specific at the same time, in that very uh, specific situation, the mutex send the blocks block signal to both the uh, both the uh, task so what will have what happened then one task task on both the task got the block uh, signal they think that okay so i have to wait for a few uh, moment uh, before uh, the i have to wait for a few moment uh, during that time another task is uh, executing its um, operation and both the both the tasks will uh, get uh, will will think that and they will stay in an ideal infinite loop state where uh, the, 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 the state will not change for both the tasks. So to solve that problem we have we have introduced a specific uh, solution which is known as semaphores. Now semaphore is a count. So what 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 it, what it do? It basically as the mutex was always guarantees that checking or modifying the value of a semaphore can be done safely without creating a race condition. And how it happens? Each semaphore has a counter value and which is a non-negative. So we place the counter value. So let's go to the next slide. We will understand that. So the operation for semaphore here is first is a weight operation. The weight operation de decrements the value of the semaphore by one. If the value is already zero, the operation blocks until the value of the semaphore becomes positive due to the action of some other task. When the semaphore's value become positive, it is decremented by one and the weight operation returns. A post operation increments the value of the semaphore by 1. If the semaphore was previously 0 and other tasks are blocked in a weight operation on that semaphore, only one of these tasks is unblocked and its weight operation completes, which brings the semaphore's value back to 0. It means, suppose the post operation was post basically, it means that if the semaphore was previously 0 and other tasks are blocked in a weight operation on that semaphore, only one of those tasks is unblocked and its weight operation completes. So, uh, grabbing a specific mutex at the very same time by various tasks, that that possibility will 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 be removed. That in that in that uh, suppose there are three or four uh, tasks are in a weight operation. So when the semaphore is previously zero and that other tasks are blocked in a weight operation on the semaphore, only one of those tasks is unblocked and its weight operation completes, which brings the semaphore's value value back to zero. So let's go to the next slide. So, so we have understood that 
the mutates the semaphore will have a counter now suppose one uh, one uh, task has grabbed the mutex so the, the the weight operation this of weight operation the decrease the value of the semaphore by one now in that semaphore suppose there are three four tasks are there so that semaphore will be in a weight state and the de it decreases the value of the semaphore by one if the value is already zero if the if the if the value is already zero the operation blocks until the value of the semaphore becomes positive so what will happen that the grabbing a mutex at a very same time by two three other uh, different tasks that possibility will be removed because according the, the the whole all the all those tasks tasks will be operate operate uh, according to the uh, counter of the semaphore so the, uh, this is the process by which we can remove the deadlock situation uh, so this is the semaphore so let's go to the next step. now what is itc itc allows the allows tasks to um, communicate and synchronize their actions without sharing the same address space the itc one uh, synchronization example semaphore communication message queue and shared uh, that the data transfer sharing data event notification resource sharing and synchronization in synchronization there is always a resource in contention which needs to be handled properly failing which will result in a race condition or data in case of communication it is about message or information exchange between two tasks offering various types of depend uh, dependent depending uh, dependency uh, depending on on the need itc mechanism mechanism used for communication message passing mailboxes message queues sockets pipes shared in case of synchronization mutex semaphore monitors event notification signals now let us focus on, on on some of this mechanism and build better understand message passing now message passing is about the mechanism for communication so in case of message passing in a message system there are no shared variables two operation for fixed or variable sized message sent and received if tasks p and q wish to communicate they need to establish a communication link exchange messages via sent and received the implementation of this communication link physical memory network logical syntax and semantics and abstraction now suppose now we have suppose we need a message we have a data uh, we have to we want to send that message uh, from one uh, end to end so what will happen we will send a, we will send the message so the another uh, receive the receiver at the receiver end when the message has been uh, received that receiver end will send the acknowledgement signal which provide you the information that the message has been sent uh such just like a mobile phone where we have type a message and we have sent it and we'll get the acknowledgement signal which provides us the information that the uh, message has been sent it has been received at the receiving end. so in message passing system in case of communication we there is no condition or there is no condition where we have to share a specific data so there is no possibility of the data logging situation uh, our race condition let's go to the next now message person how it happens now suppose this is the same now suppose this is the same now i have typed a message and i have i have i i, uh, I have typed a message create a message and i have uh, after selecting that specific message i uh, push the send button so what will happen that package will send it into the queue and that queue is connected to different kind of receiver and according to the receiver address that has been attached with that uh, message from the sender sender side it will according to the address it will go to the receiver end and the receiver end will after receiving that message it, it will provide you with a acknowledgement signal 
that's acknowledgement signal will provide you the answer that the, okay the message has been delivered at the receiver now it has been written here that the message queues pass messages in both directions thereby making it as a bi-direction mechanism of communication so in a multi-processor or multi-tasking system this comes handy for ITC before task starts communicating they need to create an appropriate queues to establish that connection can be related with protocol request response now that queue will be connected through the network will be connected to different kind of receiver and so according to the address space the address that has been the, the, which will help you to identify the uh, identify the address to which um, the sender intend to uh, send the uh, message so according to the address the receiver end will be identified and it will be sent to the message uh, to the receiver so this is the basic mess, uh, message passing process let's go to the next slide now another one is a pipe a pipe is a communication device that permits unidirectional communication now in case of message passing that we have to have learned here that there's a bidirectional passage now suppose a receiver want to send a specific signal so it will send that specific signal to the send, uh, the previous send, uh, senders uh, previously senders uh, message box the process of sending a message from one way to, to another from one uh, sender to another receiver will be same it will also be uh, the, the same queue uh, uh, will be selected the same address space will be used to identify the uh, the person or the uh, receiver end to which the signal or the message or the data need to be need to be reached okay so in, in case of pipe it's a communication device that permits a uni unidirectional communication data written to the right end of the pipe is read back from the rear pipes are serial devices the data is always read from the pipe in the same order it was written a pipe's data capacity is limited if the writer task writes faster than the reader task consumes the data and if the pipe cannot store more data the writer task blocks until more capacity becomes available that usually happens in uh, in our old school phones those we have used earlier if the reader tries to read but no data is available it blocks until the data becomes available thus the pipe automatically synchronizes the two tasks and the sharing data process will not be required here and the problems will, not, will also not be occur so now if we just elaborate the whole thing that we have learned here that the pipe's data capacity is limited so what will happen if the writer task if the writer task writes faster than the reader task consumes the data and if the pipe cannot store more data the writer task blocks until more capacity becomes available suppose i want to i i have a message that i want to send to some specific pc with the, with the address has been entered also now i have sent the data i have sent the data but in the receiver end the there is the memory space has been full has been as in full uh, so the data that i have created or uh, that i have write i have sent that data but the data will not be uh, will not be reach will not be reached to the receivers because the memory space of the receiver end is 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 not existed or basically it can't it, it, it basically run out the the, mem the memory space has been run out. so until and unless the the, the that receiver end will uh, if the if until and unless the receiver end free some space that uh, the message that has been sent to the receiver end will not be accepted or not not be uh, not be uh, will not reach to the receivers so until and unless the capacity of the specific receiver end has been activated again that specific message that has been written or writes by the or write by the sender end it will stay in a queue suppose there are suppose the, uh, the receiver end has doesn't have any capacity and i have write five or four message to that receiver to the to the receiver but it will not be able to read all those messages because the memory is full so what will happen all those message will stay in a queue in the stay in a queue in the uh, queue first after the memory uh, space has been allocated or the free space has been available that the data will be uh, received by the receiver so this is the pipe so let's go to the next step. 
now this is the pipe concept the standard input standard output this is a unidirectional concept pipes are used in implementation where output of one process to be input of another not vice versa some of the popular linux utilities implement pipes for command handling several powerful functions can be in a single statement using pipes streams of process can be redirected to user specified location using pipes these are the advantages of pipes let's go to the next slide now the shared memory how the shared memory works let's we understand how the shared memory works shared memory allows two or more tasks to access the same memory that is the that is the definition of shared now when one task changes the memory all the other tasks see the modification now shared memory is the fastest form of inter task communication because all tasks share the same piece of memory it also avoids the copying data unnecessarily now suppose how uh, you uh, now if we have to uh, elaborate on this uh, specific statement that suppose there are three or four or more than 10 tasks are um, performing uh, running sample now suppose within the 10 task there are four or five tasks that needs to share a specific memory space now in case of shared memory now suppose the shared memory system is not available what will happen the one task will copy the memory address it will use the data of that memory and until until and unless that task completed that shared that, that memory will be will not will not be available for other tasks so after completion of one task the other task will which are in which is in a queue will get to the memory it will use it again the, so that so on so forth that the same thing will happen the 10 or 15 memory will be in task all are waiting in a queue okay so one by one they using the memory and they are releasing it and the, the next one will grab it. so through which the process will get longer and each time we have to use we have to use the same the you have to copy the same memory address each each and every time now if you use a shared memory where we use the same memory we use the same data of the specific memory and there is no less shared memory by suppose uh, simultaneously 10 tasks are uh, sharing the specific memory now what will happen we don't need to copy the uh, address of the memory space because we are using the same specific memory space at the very uh, same time simultaneously so and also the process speed will get increased now suppose if task 10 tasks are uh, properly working simultaneously what will happen the performance of the specific device will get elevated so that is a positive uh, advantage of uh, shared memory process so this is the shared memory so let's go to the next one. now how the shared memory works so this is the processor what this is the processor this is the mapping and this is the shared memory. to use a shared memory segment one task must allocate the segment then each task desiring to access the segment must attach the segment a task can make use of the shared memory using the attached location it must use the memory in conjunction with synchronization methods using mutex and semaphore after finishing its use of the segment each task detaches the segment at some point one task must deallocate the segment so what will happen the each task desiring to access the segment must attach the segment so first the shared memory the segment of the shared different segment has been uh, attached to different memory so after completing the segment they will use uh, another they will use another segment and that segment will be freed up so that segment will be available for another process processor another process to be to be uh, to be available okay so depending upon so what will happen that one shared memory has different kind of segment each segment will be shared to different uh, tasks so each and each task suppose there are one shared memory and each has uh, 10 segments So what? What will happen? The ten uh, task will get the ten different ten different segment will be will be allocated to ten different tasks. So each task, after completing its segment, it will uh, release the uh, data itself from the segment and it will uh, go to find another segment. So if another segment will be opened up by another task, that uh, segment will be uh, grabbed by the other task. So what will happen? The simultaneously all the segments are being used. and all the tasks are uh, being performed at the same time so what will happen the process speed the performance of the speed the performance of the uh, processor will be increased so that is the basic uh, definition of shared memory okay so so 
that's why if you use a shared memory, it will be very helpful. So let's go to the next slide. So quick recap that what we have done in this last four lectures here. You know, the operating system is a program that runs on a super loop. Operating system has got some critical components, scheduler, task memory, system call interface, file system, etc. All of these components are very much part of embedded and real-time systems. However, some of the parameters need to be tuned, changed in order to meet the needs of the system. Fundamentals remain same, only specifics change. Real-time and embedded system coupling versus decoupling. Engineers need to understand these differences in order to be effective during the product development. Let's go to the next slide. So here we have the real-time system that we need to understand. Now, these are characteristics. Capable of carrying to timing requirements of the process under its control. Fast, low latency. Predictable, able to determine tasks completion time with certainty. Both time critical and non time critical tasks to coexist. Types hard real time system. Guarantees that real time tasks be completed within their required deadlines. Requires formal verification, guarantees of being to always meet its hard deadline, except for fatal errors. Example air traffic control, vehicle subsystem control, medical system. It means in case of hard real time system, the hardware is the key. Okay. So, what will happen in case of hardware? Uh, in case of where, so, if we have a hardware software trade off, what will happen? The, in case of hardware, what will happen? The performance of the system will increase, but it will not be flexible. The hard real time system will not be flexible because it will have only very specific functionality to perform. But in case of soft real time system, what has been uh, described here is that provides a priority of real time tasks over non real time tasks, also known as best effort system, example, multimedia stream and computer games. In case of computer games and multimedia system, what will happen? The software will be in the, the hardware that I have been very using is uh, much more complex. The architecture of the uh, system is much more complex, higher, com uh, higher complexity will be available. So, the, according to the software, the program will be available. And so, what will happen that the system is, is, is fixed, flexible because, the complex because of the complex architecture, we can apply different kind of code system to uh, perform the subjects. Uh, so, in case of hard real time system, the, it is time constraint, fast, but non flexible, less flexible. In case of soft real time system, it is a flexible, but it is not time stringent. The architecture is much more complex and it will be a time taking system. Now, so, let us go to the next one. Classification The types of system can be either unit processor. Uniprocessor, microprocessor, distributed system. There are two different execution models. In a preemptive model of execution, a task may be interrupted, preempted during its execution, and another task run its place. So, if there is a uh, interruption, oh, sorry, uh, if there is an interruption, uh, it could be said as preemptive model where execution task may be interrupted. In a non-preemptive model of execution, after a task that starts executing. No other task may execute until this task concludes or yields the signal. So this is known as non preemptive In case of preemptive, we can the interrupt can interrupt the uh, task. But in case of non preemptive, the nobody, nothing can uh, stop the execution of the task after it starts executing. So let's go to the next thing. Characteristics of RTOS uh, are uh, single purpose, small size, inexpensively mass produced, specific timing requirements, feature missing in an RTS, support for variety of peripheral devices as usual, protection and security mechanism, multiple users, multiple mode, modes, dynamic allocation of memory. So single purpose, small size, inexpensively mass produced and specific timing requirements are the RTS single system based features. And the missing features are these that I have So So, we will end this lecture here and we will uh, describe all this uh, slide in the next uh, lecture. Okay.